Windows computer. So we're starting at page four line, halfway through line 10. That's right, and you're already looking at it. Aha, uh -huh. <laughs> ESET. Um, uh huh. You set burn on a stick Q in D. Yes, Kendet. She became very angry. Mm -hmm. Er at or against Ta Pesejet, the Iliad. You something, you. Oh, that's an S. Okay. You <laughs> US while she was hair. Yurt Ankh. Okay, while she was and, and while she was swearing. Ankh -n. The Netcher and um in Bach. Mm -hmm. And so the the Y1 is just the extra tick after the, the second testicle. <laughs> yeah, mean, that's kind of what I'm getting. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All yeah. right. Mm -hmm. All right. Ta, mostly because I know what's coming. Ta, Pesajet. With, uh, so there's the sun disk with the snake. There's the D underneath. There's the, okay. So three of those lines are, the three uh, God signs, and then there's a bird on a stick. And then there's another thing that looks like a bird on a stick, but it's pearl strips. That's right. And you can yeah. tell because there's two horizontal, there's two diagonal lines at the top, it's you just one. And I think this thing can, right I, here, can, yeah, right above that is, is this long yep. W, this swooshing W. That's right. It's just making a really long downward stroke because you can. Oh, yeah. Oh, OK. Yes. It's just the M over here. So yeah, all looks pretty familiar by now, right? Um, I think. I mean, the things that could throw one off is maybe that little T here that takes a bit of getting used to. But then again, is to is something we've seen quite a bit now. Um, or S2, or however you want to pronounce it, S, I don't know. It's a it's an A, I mean a U plus a plus a Z. However, that was phonetically realized. Maybe S. Speculating. Um, a lot of people transcribe it as just dot dot s. How do they translate transcribe it? A lot of people transliterate it as just dot s, assuming the T's been dropped. Yeah, I, think so I mean it, it's I like every transcribing round, so. everything that's there, but then maybe the other thing to point out is like um, life really looks different from, from what you would expect. Often it's it's just this essentially, or maybe a tiny little. Maybe loop. it's a little round at the top. Yeah, yeah. like but it's really more top, like but... like a T. It's not that that ankh sign that people like to wear yeah. on pendants and whatnot. Yeah. And it, interestingly enough, anash in Coptic, not onach. So the the has a different development for oath. It becomes anash uh, with a sh, hmm. with shy instead of a ch. In, Can you uh, write it out for those of us who are woefully behind in Coptic? Oh, sure. Hang on. I won't. I won't say that about anybody else. But I'm talking about myself. So you know. I'll throw myself in that bucket. <laughs> <laughs> this versus. Wait, is it ornich with a long o? I think so. So this. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And this is oath. Um, okay, cool. Interesting. So the prince, so the vowel pattern must have been quite different. Yeah, it was not, indeed, right? And also, I mean, something must have conditioned the, I mean, you would think palatalization or something of the, the her sound. I thought that was interesting. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. That's neat. Wait, I'm sorry, I missed it. Did you say that the um, Ankh? as a noun and a verb are different? Not quite, more like the, the, the to live or life is this one. And the one that means oath, even though it looks the same okay. and 
in uh, hieroglyphic spelling, um, if you look at the Coptic descendant, it's different. Okay. Gotcha. Because yeah, thanks for asking that, Kevin. That that helped solidify things for me. Mm, sure thing. And I mean, that again is probably a good indicator for while the hieroglyph shows us a lot, it's unfortunately also an indicator for how much it doesn't show us. Like mm -hmm. one of those rare yeah. cases where you go, like, oh, yeah, we're just going to say, Ankh. Mm, well, probably not. But. <laughs> <laughs> and they might, they might totally know, just like we might pronounce, you probably can think of examples, I can't, but. Um, we might pronounce the exact same word spelled differently in different contexts. You know, oh, yeah. Even when we're reading it, we pronounce it differently in our head. You know? Yeah. Well, you just did it. Live and live. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> read or lead and live, right? You know, like lead the metal versus lead yep. the quality. Yeah. Or bow and bow, which can mean, I think, at least three different things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So pity the foreign language learner. No, I mean, this is the kind of stuff where every time in the beginning you have to think, okay, which, which bow or bow is it? And how, how am I going to read it? It's, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's peculiar. All right. I think the rest is clear, right? Let's go on to the next one. Um, so as my mother lives, and the mother is really interesting here. That's... That doesn't look like a vulture at all. I think we briefly touched on that before. That, that yeah, didn't we look at another one that was a lot, that was abbreviated like that? Yeah. I think so. This looks like a deja vu, right? Either we've been through this line before, it happened a couple of pages upwards. One of the two. So I think then let's let's book this under under by now familiar. Um then the so it's my mother, me. So N, T, and then the egg. Mm -hmm. Bird on a stick. And then nature. Yeah. <laughs> that one wasn't obvious to me, but the, the net that nature is written out there. It isn't obvious. I don't think it is. I mean, no. once you know it is, but. <laughs> it's not yeah, exactly which, which tick is the T and which one is the R and which one is the egg like it's I think you just have to recognize the whole word right the key thing about the T in my mind is that what really matters is the well if this is your T what really matters is this stroke if everything else can go this one's important this one yeah. isn't really but the base of the bed loaf is important so mm -hmm. what when you write this one, this one's supposed to be the fat one, and the other two can be kind of, kind of squished together. Um, I mean, squished together, but like, like de-emphasized. Sorry. I think that's what's happening here. So, like, you don't really have the beginning; you just have this part. Same here, like. Hmm. Hmm. So the goddess in Coptic, for whatever reason, they have goddesses in Tore, still hmm. around. So, must be Natara, Natarat, Natarit, Natarit. I don't know, but something like that. So maybe that's why they write it so long, is it's it's just kept a bunch of syllables that are gone from nature. Really interesting hypothesis. Could be, huh? Possible. I'm I'm often wondering whether the question of if you put a phonetic complement or not has anything to do with the syllable structure, and the reason I'm thinking that is. Because when they start writing um, like intof him in Coptic, they sorry, in 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 hieratic, they start to add an extra T before the whole thing. I'm sorry, I'm not ligaturing. So N T F, right? That's how you would write it in, in Middle Egyptian. And then in Late Egyptian, they suddenly put an M in front of it. And in Coptic, you would have and off with a, like the syllabic stroke on syllabic stroke on the end. And okay. I'm wondering if that's what that's supposed to be. They're basically trying to tell us it's mm tof, mm tof, like a separate syllable. But that's my personal yeah, question. Interesting. Huh. Yeah, I like that hypothesis. 
It could be. I mean, it's, it's suddenly I realized that, that because everybody says, oh, maybe they weren't clear on what's pronounced M and N, and I, I just know. I don't think so. <laughs> it's N in Coptic, it's N in Middle Egyptian. So why would it become M in the middle? But if it is some kind of like, I just want to make it clear, pronounce this one separately, that sort of makes some sense. Mm -hmm. You're never going to turn an N in front of a T into an M linguistically. That doesn't work. That's never going to happen. Exactly. Exactly. It was the other way. Right. Yeah, you have to move your tongue to do extra work to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tough. Mm -hmm. No. Agreed. That doesn't make sense, does it? You need a B or something. Okay. Next one. Interesting. So, Samo Anash. <laughs> I guess it's Onik here. As yeah, it's Onik. Mm -hmm. May, as, the, may they live, or as. Should I keep going? Does anyone else want to take it? Pata? Mm -hmm. So, and again, your theory that it's, it's just the horizontal bit that's the T. It's the P comes down and just connects to a straight stroke. So, PT, H is the little squiggle with a line under it, a line below it, and burn on a stick. Ta? I'm not sure we've. Well, I guess we have seen that before, but I don't remember. No, this, is, this is wild. I think what he's doing is this. Top and ta -da, something like this. So that's the, the dots underneath. Um, yeah, that's the two oh. dots. Okay. But then the vertical stroke is big. Exactly. Yeah. And then you do the little... And then the little squiggle there is the, the baby canal or whatever that is. Yep, the baby canal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love that. The baby canal. Well, and then we have the the two ligature together, like like he often does. Very much so, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a really interesting one, the, the double N. Yeah. I think they do that a lot. They write it like this. Yeah. Well, it really is one character, right? The two reads together. Right. Exactly, exactly. So let's make it one character. Mm -hmm. Proto hashtag. <laughs> Say that again? Proto hashtag. Right. <laughs> sure. So close. Proto hashtag. And then we have two ends on top of each other, two birds on a stick. Because it's the two lands, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Okay. Then vertical Q, big vertical Q, a little tiny Aleph, and big guy with his eye, <laughs> hands in the air. Right. YMCA guy. Is it just in? Is it just in the hieroglyph? Is, <laughs> YMCA guy. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> It's interesting that, like, the hieroglyph, he's standing, but this one looks to me like he's sitting down. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, yeah, it totally shows his lap. Right. You're right, you're right. Interesting, good point. But the, the uh, Hech guy, or Hach guy, for the million years, he looks different. I mean, mm -hmm. he was yeah, he's very different. Yeah. With yeah. The, the thing on his head. Yeah, exactly, it's something on the head. Right. So it's quite different from the Hech guy. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, there's a tiny squiggle, which I guess is the Y1. And then we have the shoe feather. Yep. Which, which is in, interestingly, yeah. has like a little. Is there a, like mark, a like precursor there? stroke on it, right? Yeah, what is, what is that right there? I think that's normal, okay. actually. Let's have a quick look at it. Yeah, but... I think that's part of the shoe, the shoe sign, but. Okay. That's how I don't know why. Uh, oh, that's a good question. Why? Try out. Hey guys, we're way beyond the trying stage here. <laughs> Oops, I think that was my audio again. I heard something. No, that was okay. That was okay. It's H6, I think. Thank you, sir. There we go. Am I not? Oh. Oh, there yeah. yeah. Let me move you guys over. There we go. So oldest versions, like you would expect, like an S, but with a little bit of more 
a little bit so more structure. Same on curve it. and then out again. Yeah. And then something happens. And oh no, wait. This is Dynasty Five. I'm I'm wrong. Sorry. They they are they are scrambled. This is five. This is eighteen. So it actually starts out with the extra stuff. My bad. That's interesting. Look at that. This is like the earlier versions. It looks similar to the snail ear with the two hash strokes on it. Similar to the snail. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> the, the ear you mean, <laughs> right? Oh. Right, snail ear. Well, they like to call it a snail. Um, looks like there are two versions. Is that what it is? This one they call H66 asterisk. And the, oh, these are two different. Oh, look at that. Look at there's the double stroke on the stem of the on, on the bottom line now, or the second to the bottom line there. You see the double stroke. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And one is Mahat and the, the other one is Shu. Exactly. On the original hieroglyph. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? On the original hieroglyph. Yes, there. Whoa. You think there's a difference, like because Good of spotting? Yeah, like the stem is is double lined on. There is, uh, I don't know that might out. just be a a non is uh, accidental detail thing. Um, oh, yeah. I never knew that. That makes sense, though. So that's why they call one H six and one H six six asterisk. Interesting. So oh, wow, two different signs which look about the same. <laughs> In, in hieroglyphs. Fascinating. Hmm. Very I'm cool. going to look it up on J session and see if it distinguishes. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, between right, Mott and Shu. I don't, I don't think I've ever noticed a difference between Mott and Shu. Never until you have heard it. Do you want to see something on J session? Yes. Yeah. You want to yeah. share? It? Okay, I'm going to share the screen. Um, yes. And it's not showing up. So I'm going to show you the whole screen. It's it's not giving me the choice to share it. So I'm going to just share it. Wait. No, you can't. There you go. Can you see? OK. See? Yeah. Right wow. here, look at they, they got the two lines. Oh, they got the two lines on them. Interesting. <laughs> and is one mocked and the other one shoe? Like in the uh, short, let's see. In the uh, values? One is, no, oh, one is both. both. And they're both both. Okay. Wow. Hmm. So they just have it as a variation. Interesting. I'm gonna stop sharing. There we go. Very very cool. Love this. And I think sometimes um, they take JSESH or even when they're listing the hieroglyphs, um, some of the hieroglyphs, I think, are um, taken from hieratic back to hieroglyph and maybe never existed in hieroglyph form. You know what I mean? Like the X or the thick line, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Right. They're actually for transcribing hieratic. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if there's an actual hieroglyph with that notches on it or whether it's just transcribing hier um, hieratic. If so my know. problem is still that none of these look like the shoe we have here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Well, I mean, they're the, like the up and down thing is generally the same, but that little tick at the bottom right, like maybe that's one of those extra strokes that's just moved down. But I mean, uh, to your point, I would see this one here is the closest, but it's yeah, further, right? it's really at the bottom for him, not not more at the top or middle. He's almost writing it like a little U before the show, like yeah, a, mm -hmm. yeah. Closer. And then there's a UF. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Nice find. Um, but was it here? Yeah, it's, it, you're right. It's different. I mean, without previous knowledge, I would have said that's a W. Okay. Yeah, it, it's exactly what it looks like, but it's. It's got the exact same stroke after it. Right. And I think something that happens, I see that in Chinese a lot, because a lot of characters start out as individual characters, like they, they depict something, a picture of something. And then later you decompose that into different elements that are familiar from other characters, even though it's not originally, hmm, how do I, 
Like, for example, mm -hmm. the head of a dragon suddenly starts to look like a vase, even though um, it has got nothing to do with vases, but uh, it's just a, a shape that your, your hand and your brain are familiar with. And so you, you decompose it that way, if that makes any sense. Um, so suddenly, like, the left-hand side of a dragon looks like a vase in the moon. Um, and I'm thinking the same thing. Oh, might as well. Can you draw it for us? Yeah. Um, I know the rest of you guys know amazing stuff like Japanese, but... <laughs> I'm linguistically challenged when it comes to. <laughs> <laughs> not at all, not at all, not at all. Uh, this means you're starting with Egyptian. I'm sure you'll get around to Asian language. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. <laughs> Give it time. Why does it not want to cooperate today? Because it's said to English, how about that? No. Nah. That's better. Now we want dictionary. That's better. Let's take the full version. So I think everybody from the Japanese side knows it as video or something. Uh, I know it is long. Um, and if you look at that, it's really, I think it's just a picture of a dragon, if I'm not mistaken. But if you look at the, oh, cool. the individual elements there, like this one here looks like um, there is a character that looks like this. Uh, Standing, right? Exactly, to stand. Uh, Lee. So number three here. So that top part here suddenly starts to look a lot like that. Then the bottom part all of, sort of looks like a moon, like, like here. Yeah. Um, actually, or like a meat radical. Row would be the same thing. Um, so when you write it, you write it like you're writing the word stand and you're writing the, the word meet or, or, or moon. Then the left, the right hand side still is something very peculiar. You can't break that down into anything. But basically what I'm trying to say is in what your brain does essentially, it makes you break things down into familiar shapes, even though that's not where, the, that's not where it originally came from. Um, and I think the same thing may be happening with our friend here where Essentially, Shu is not S plus plus W, but he's writing it almost like a long S with a W to it. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I sense. suppose it's possible there's also, there really just is a W there, but Gardner doesn't transcribe one, but he does transcribe the shoe with an extra stroke on it. I was afraid somebody was going to point that out. Yes, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> because this Gardner didn't think so. all over the place. It could be. <laughs> Actually, scroll down because in the last line there are a couple, or there is. There's, there's another one. shoe, yeah. Yeah, uh, there, no, there's two. There's two. So let's see. Let me skip ahead just to see if they're the same. This one or the next one? Next one. Uh, 13. Oh, oh, they have two shoes. Sorry. Same. That, joke. that goes all theory. <laughs> oh, look at that. It doesn't have a. Yeah. Well, this one is Mott, though. This one is Maat, not Shu. Yeah. Is that the difference? Oh, good point. Like they're actually, he's actually writing a different one. Well, is there more? Didn't we have a show before? But we had one. But now I don't remember. Going down at the. Kevin, you always very fast at that. Is there another shoe somewhere? That's just yeah, what I was going to say. Yeah. Whoops. Oh, just a Search for terrorists. Ah. H6. It's not on C1. Yeah, that's right. Um, the first one we have is on line uh, one four. Okay, I thought we had one before, like free of something. Uh, and, uh, it's, oh, no, that's a, a mod again. Yeah, that is a mod. Oh, oh, there's a there's one in the blank space. That's a shoe on on line four. Oh yeah, you're right. The very first word, yep. which doesn't exist. Oh. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> well, this one clearly has a mark. On that it. one's not not really helping. <laughs> uh, line line seven. Oh, again, it's uh, covered up. 
<laughs> Come on. You think trying to hide the truth from us? Yeah. There's three of them. Well, there's a mot in that line, too. Yeah. Um, there's three of them in the row. That's on, not uh, two, seven, but they're mots. But they're mots again. Okay. And then uh, another mat, uh, line three seven. Um, oh, uh, they remember when he uh, says your shrine is empty? Yes. Um, um, they use the shoe uh, for that, yeah. and that's a uh, three ten. Awesome, that should work. Three ten. So none of. But they put the bad bird. bird next to it, so we know it's empty rather than. You know, emptiness or whatever. And there you go. There's the W. Oh. W. Huh. Very cool. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. So it is a shoe thing. It is a shoe thing. And it, and it's very pronounced. The bump on the top. It it almost looks separate. You know, like mm -hmm. written separately. It does. So maybe it isn't an S actually. Now that this is much clearer than the previous example. And, and also, it doesn't make any sense that that's a W from at the end of the previous mm -hmm. word. Yep. yep. Right. No, you're right. And Not after the K. W so. after it again. But there's always yeah. a W. After it. Yeah. Yeah. There's always a W after it. Yep. Right. That's really interesting. Mm. So huh. the shoe is written different from the mod. Mm. That's a really nice find. Huh. Awesome. All right. That's really neat. Yeah, yeah, that is really interesting that they the same symbol is written differently when it means something or pronounced differently. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it happens with some some hieratic characters, right? That they're clearer, like the two birds, the the bad bird and the and the um, the war bird. The, yeah, the war bird. It's so different, and I'm sorry, I'm still stumbling over that in hieroglyphs. It's like, okay, is that tail rounded or, or forked? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what, what the difference is, huh? <laughs> um, hey. Like, like a Christian says how um, uh, you write things bigger when they mean more meaning. When you know it's going to be there, you can just scribble it, and mm -hmm. then when when it draws a meaning so that's why that's why maybe um different characters in different contexts are drawn differently could be could be indeed okay t um yeah again act of faith <laughs> i can see it, <laughs> is it? Uh, otherwise i don't see it uh it's like i mean when somebody identifies it for you it becomes like a t and then the Y's all slurred together. Yeah. Yeah, the double plumes are pretty clear though. Yeah, I mean, it almost looks to me like an Aleph bird, but yeah, it can't uh, really yeah. get an Aleph bird mm -hmm. there. First. I mean, this here is really the same as on the Aleph bird. And then this one here, I guess, is a T, but. Yeah. I mean, when he does the Aleph bird, it's a little wider, I think. Mm -hmm. Like this is very compressed or as well into a vertical thing mm -hmm. true but. compared to here right yeah right. Exactly. yep yep then a nice nice crown i guess a u this one is confusing at first yeah because what that really is is an a with a with a stick yeah there's an a with a stick and and that's like a big W, like it's most of them are abbreviated, but sometimes there's a loop at the top. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guy with a stick, I mean, three strokes in between for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, two horns, I think those look pretty similar to the horns we saw before. Maybe they're a little curvier at the top. Cool. But before we go to the horns, that verb here, is that really just? Is that really just a a W and a and a stick, and then you somehow read that H N N? How does that make sense? I mean, I would have had no clue if uh, Gardner hadn't put a footnote about it. 
Oh, did he? Did he say something? Yeah. Gardner in his transcription, there's a footnote saying this is doubtless Wath. And then it says C line 14.7. So I don't know if it's more fully written out there or not. I've got no open. Oh, uh, Ralph, could you share that one real quick? I don't have Gardner open. Oh. Uh, well, I can try and hold my thing up to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <clears throat> that's it. That's all he says. Doubtless for Waf. For Waf? Is that what it is? Yeah. yeah. W I and F. And let and once you know that Lesko has that spelling, I think. Yeah, I think that's how I found that word too. Oh, okay. Huh. Interesting. So there's, um, so eat has an extra F and waff doesn't, doesn't write one. It's been stolen. <sighs> Go figure. Well, they only had that many Fs, I guess, so. <laughs> Don't want too many vipers around the place. They <laughs> already used that somewhere else, so. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, back to your point. So, our little horns here. Um, I think what they do is this like, and why that looks like a horn, I have no idea, but we've seen it before like this. So, that seems to be it. Yeah. Double bird. No, this is not Alger, even though it looks like it. It's just plural strokes with an N. Then yeah, at first I thought it was a Jer too, but it's somehow not con as connected. Right. Yeah. And, and then the horizontal is the first part of the, the nature. Right. Or the, sorry, the vertical is the first part of the nature. Yep. So that takes a bit of getting used to. Got a big, nice U or A. I always like to pronounce it. U2. Yeah. U2. And then this really interesting shape. Yeah. Can we look that one up? I don't. So that's the wah? Yeah, yeah. that's the wah. Yeah, that's surprising. Like the ha is clear, but. Yeah, it is. It is. Should we take a quick look at this one? I think it always looks like this, sure. to be honest. Um, I'd like to look at it. OK. Then I need a glyph number. Oh, wait, we can do it by, by pronunciation. That works too. Can I jump back to the U2? So the two there is just U, right? And the U is the continuation of the sentence. So mm -hmm. you are putting or placing these things before Atum. Is how I'm translating, is, it? is that what well, others have? You're right. We didn't do the translation of this yet, right? So let's do that first. You're right. You to walk my bed, made it, or I guess, mute if, if you stick to the Coptic and mark yeah. atum or ten. And then I have Sarah where, uh, Emmy, yes. Inu, so in Heliopolis, who is in Heliopolis, yeah. Emmet, and also before. Uh, Jeffrey, mm -hmm. uh, Kefri, Harry Ib, who is in We Are F, his park. Yes. Right. Okay. Very good. Makes, makes sense. And so, Wach is to place, right? To place, to put something like this? Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so the EU2 is, is like, that's not the conjunctive, but it's kind of. Two is sort of the indefinite subject there. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm struggling a little bit with this, right? So normally the U at this point in time is just the is the the Coptic A, the what you call it, um, circumstantial. 
Okay. Okay. So while while the words are being placed normally, but does that make sense in this this uh, this oath? As my as my mother lives and as as Ptachtatenen, what does he actually do as he lives as well? You wach nai medut medut mach atum. Hmm. Does that make sense grammatically? Is it a is it a question of are you placing these things before atum? Isn't there a different word for questions though? Well, there is for questions. So Simpson translates it as a what is it a subjunctive? So these matters okay. should be placed should before. Be, yeah. Okay. Should be placed maybe because but why was you? See. So the, the the other the vow stuff before that is just like an introduction to the sentence, kind of. Right? Okay. Okay. Yeah, that would be sort of like the Middle Egyptian way of how to read it, right? It's just like like a way to start off the sentence. And then yeah, or, um, or to introduce the sentence. Damn. Future three. Oh, future you think three. it's future three? New verb form. That's right. I love this group. They think it's future three. You That's can... interesting. So let's talk about this real quick. Like future oh, plus a. Yeah. Right. Like, like like normally it's like the hmm, how to do this, how to do this properly. Um, so uh, I can't <laughs> it will convert it automatically if you write in. And that's cute. So normally it would be like, for example, future three or first singular would be you, we, er, right? I will. Right, right. yeah. And then in Coptic that becomes, so the you becomes a, and the I becomes e, and the er becomes a as well. So, oh, okay. And then like, for example, you will, you, ek, er becomes Oh. A from the circumstantial, the K, and then the R becomes A again, a K. So, mm -hmm. and F A and so on. It's always the uh -huh. logic. And that basically means it will, or I think it can also mean it shall. Um, okay. Um, okay. In this case, you have U2, so the, the indefinite pronoun, somebody. Uh -huh. Um, somebody should take this to Atom or something like that. Right. Somebody, and exactly. Somebody should take this to Atom. That's exactly okay. what it means. Okay, cool, cool. But that is really cool. I didn't catch that at all because there's no R. So you think like, what is this? Um, yeah. It looks so Middle Egyptian, but it's a future three. Thank you. That's helpful. Wow. And this one does not survive into Coptic, unfortunately. So there is no AT or something <laughs> that I know of. Okay. Then I guess we had that sentence, right? I think so. Yeah, I was interested in the, were we talking about the WA? I'm looking up the WA. How is everybody feeling about the, the glyph in the middle of the WA? Ah, yes. Not sure what that one's numbered. I guess that's just a ha. Is it not what? It's V29. V is in Victor? Victor 29, yeah. Thank you, sir. So that's Thank the braided you. rope. Right. Yep. There it is. It's got some variants. Right. Some of them do look very much like ours. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's a lot of variation. Yeah. Yeah. How do we break this down? Um, well, I wonder if like the the two arms on it are just like the the sunbeam or whatever it is on top. Oh sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
That makes some sense, you're right. And some of them have the arc on top and some of them don't. We just have a dot for the arc, I guess. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It looks right. kind of like, you know, some of them look like the feather on top of the bark of the million or a million, you know? Yeah. Right. I mean, if you start look all crazy, of them. Look at that crazy glyph, though, the, the one in the upper left. Yeah, I've never seen it written like that. That's that's awesome. Yeah. With all the rays and the rope detailed in the middle and stuff. That is kind of cool. I mean, that, that's clearly it's, it's more like those those medieval illuminated manuscripts, the initial. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you have half an hour to write one letter. <laughs> <laughs> Life is good when you have half an hour to write a letter. Yeah. True. <laughs> It's a type of meditation, I guess. But if you look at yeah. this, actually, it sort of explains what's going on here because you yeah. have this, and then you have these things, and you have this, and sort of if you make that, well, kind of, right? So you have those two arms and you have something else going on, which could be simplified like that. I see that. And then this whole rasmatas becomes just one vertical line. Mm -hmm. Then you need to finish it off somehow, so you do this. So that's kind of intuitive. It's interesting that again, as so often in, 20, in Dynasty 25, they return to, to the older ways and they do this again. So it's terrible with the onlines. But you see, they, they're going back to something that sort of gives rise to this. If you take this and simplify it, it would give you this. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Very cool. There is something that came up in on Discord the other day. Um, where was it? Oh yes. Um, there was sip. There was something Ptolemaic. Way before all the fun discussions and whatnot. Okay, guys, sorry. Thought I would find it right away. Of course, I didn't. Um, Dendera. Let's use Dendera as a search term. No, not Dendera. Maybe with Iron Age. That's better. Mm -hmm. uh, and where was that? That initially confused me a lot. Yeah, here you go. Um, so this one is actually the sec glyph. I'll show you in a moment, mm -hmm. but it's written like an H. Wow. It should look like. Yeah, it's like an H with a K on top of it. Yeah. Right? Right, and it, it, it's really a variant for something else. Which, uh, yeah, here. This is what it should look like. But then in Ptolemaic spelling, it often becomes like a little dot on top of the H. So it's, it's not the whole crown, but it's more like, a, like, a, like an empathic, and then with a, um, a dot on top, a Pikachu H with a dot on top. Um, so that's seems- a Pikachu, Pikachu H. <laughs> 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 Say it again, I missed it. It's a Pikachu, Pikachu H. Yeah, I guess you're right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, there you go. All right. Mm. So we had the wah, uh, the words, na, na, medut, I guess. That ligature between the D and the T, I guess you really have to know that, that there should be a T underneath that D. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I don't know that I would have classed that as a D because I'm assuming the D generally goes further horizontally, but yeah, I don't know of another mm -hmm. word that would fit there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the D is so short. Like. Right, right. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think we just have to take that one. I think we've seen it before somewhere, the DT. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think we just have to take that as a ligature, at least at, what was this, 19th Dynasty, I think. So I'll just, I think, save it as a separate character mentally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Medud is also kind of, the, the Medud is kind of, kind of weird, right? Mm -hmm. And that's probably not going to work because I made a mistake. No, it did work. Yay. Hallelujah. Okay. Oh, wow. That's got a lot of variants too. Yeah, we were looking at this. So I don't think we may have looked at this before. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's, it's that, like this. It looks a lot like that character to uplift or to hold something up. To uplift to okay. hold something up. Yeah. Why am I not clicking? How's that one pronounced? I, yeah, I can't I can't remember which one it is. I know it's in um sorry, I'm mumbling. It's a. it's in the title of chapter 17 of the Book of the Dead. Um that's why I was looking at it. Up, not, not car, is it? Like QA. Um, not, uh, do you mean like a man with two, uh, two, two arms up or something? Or? Nope, nope. It's just. Oh, it's like it words like word spoken? It looks, like a, it looks like a cactus or a coat rack or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a jewelry rack or something like that. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Anyways, we, you, we can go on. I, um... Interesting. Well, in any case, so what we have is fairly typical then. The, the common element seems to be like left stroke, down stroke, possibly right stroke, although not always, and then finish it up horizontally. Tap, 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 tap. More or less the same. Okay. Does it fit here? Not really, right? <laughs> so we don't have any horizontal on this one, maybe because of the ligature T. Possibly. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Or oh, is this, does this belong to it somehow? I'm not sure. We have to. I mean, this, this double stroke here looks really weird and I. So I'll just accept it the way it is, I think. Yeah, that's great. A2 man, M. Yes. Really big atom as always, so big term. Tiny M, tiny U, medium sized God. Ser, Weru, 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 Seru, 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 who knows? <laughs> um, Emi is interesting because it doesn't look like anything you would expect. Uh, right. Kind of similar to the double N actually, but that uh, the difference being that this one's more squished together. Mm -hmm. And it always looks like this. It's like two verticals and a, and a horizontal. Um, M Yunu looks like sort of like a seating man, but it's really just that that pillar for the the holy city of On, Nu city. Okay, and then the Mi sign. That's normal. Double T, interesting. Check out that all that ligature stuff. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? And then the Heper or Hepri in this case, which is just, I suppose, tap, 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 tap. I wish that was a really elegant hieroglyph um, or, or hieratic sign. Mm -hmm. Hepri word on a stick, face. What did we make out of this here? How did we, uh, Peter, how did you translate it? Like Hepri, Hepri, um. Ib. Every, and then I said, Harry Ib, so who is in? So mm -hmm. I had the, I'm pointing at my screen, it's always dangerous in a Zoom session. Let's see. <laughs> I had um, this bit right here as a hair. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this bit as Erie. Uh, um, Harry Ib, yeah. So who is in? And I translated that as 
is that? Some of the people will translate it as dwells, who dwells in. Yeah, but yeah, that's great. It's too. a bit weird for a boat, I guess. Right? <laughs> Maybe he's loving boat life or something like that. That's right. <laughs> Okay. It's a small apartment, but at least you can take it to the Duat every night. That's right, you know. <laughs> nice view of the snakes and the stuff as you travel through the 12 hours. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite a job, actually. <laughs> right? If you don't get any rest, it's like annoying, but okay. Downside of being a god. And then we have the, the Wea, the, the Bouge, like this. It's like a huge seat in the middle and then a tiny barge to finish it off. Finish it off. Yeah, I, I was wondering about that one too. It's like, hmm, that's a really interesting uh, one where I couldn't see the relationship at all between the boat and the sitter. But uh, mm -hmm. it reminded me very much of the, of the medu stick that we were looking at earlier. Mm -hmm. um, right. Anyway. Here's what they used to do like in the 12th dynasty. It looks like this. It has like a little seat and then it does that and this. Ugh, can't draw, sorry. But you guys get the idea. Like, Yeah. Every time I'm doing it, it looks different from what I wanted. But yeah, sort of like that. And now they're just making... I wonder if they're making that huge mast like for the same reason they make a huge line on top of the warbird to distinguish yeah. it from another character. Could yeah. be. Yeah. Could very well be, you're right. And then also, I think it's like an aesthetics thing, like the queue becomes very tall, uh -huh. as opposed to, to, oops, did that wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean there? Mm -hmm. The normal round queue. What else? There are a few others like this, um, but they really stretch things now. Yeah, they're definitely the, the bad bird is one. Even the U sometimes, right? Which now looks sort of like, like this. Uh, I think they just like that shape. Later, when you look, um, like Papyrus Harris and some of the other, what else is it? I think Papyrus Turin, I'm not sure. Turin, um, there's a lot of like really these these very high, Abbott I think has that too, let me see. Papyrus Abbott, um, they get very vertical. Oops. No, that's not the one. But yes, you can sort of see it. it. Wasn't the one I was thinking of, but yeah, a lot of emphasis on the vertical lines. Um, but there's one that I can't remember off the top of my head where it's really extreme. You have those beautiful, almost looking like like Arab Arabic uh, calligraphy lines that uh, just yeah, way more vertical emphasis than than uh, than horizontal. Did we get to the end of the line? I think we did, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, just yep, the that's the end of the sentence. Hey, yep. Cool. So then let's continue next week with line 13. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Thanks. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Yeah.